Welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the greatest common divisor or greatest common factor and the least common multiple. I'd like you to read these two problems and pause the video and think about ways to solve them. Okay, so the first step for this video is to recall about unique prime factorization. So we're gonna find the unique prime factors of the following numbers. So the idea is to factor as much as possible. So maybe this first number, because there's a zero, I'm going to factor a 10. So 273 multiplied by 10. And then I'll take the number 273 and try to factor out a two, maybe I can't. Then I'll try to factor a three, and I can. So that's the same as three times 91. And 10 is the same as two times five. And now 91 is the same as seven times 13. And now we've factored completely. So we have only prime factors and it's always customary to order these factors, so I'm going to write 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 13 as our unique prime factorization. And remember, it's unique up to that order. So as long as you're writing in order, there's only one way to do it. Okay, so the next one we have 41,800. Again, let's start separating out the tens as much as possible. So 418 multiplied by 10 squared because there's two zeros. And then 418, if I divide that by two, I get 209. So multiplied by two is the same as 418. And then for 209, that's the same as 11 times 19. And I'll write 10, that's two times five. So now I'm all ready to write my unique prime factorization. I'll just order and collect all the like prime numbers. So I have two to the power of three because there's one power right there and there's two more of them there. And then next up I have five to the power of two and then multiplied by 11 and then multiplied by 19. So this method is going to help us find both the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. So before we use our unique prime factorization to find the greatest common factor and least common multiple, we're going to give solid definitions of what these things are. So if we're given integers a and b, an integer that divides both a and b, or is a factor of both a and b, is called a common divisor or a common factor. So the largest of all of these is called the greatest common factor. So we denote that with GCD. And I always like to say GCF or the greatest common factor. I prefer factor over divisor. But most of the time when I read in text, it's written as GCD. So that's why I defined it with GCD uh, for our notes. So if we wanted to make up an operation, the operation that connects A and B and produces the third number, the greatest common factor, is this triangle. So let's start. What is the GCD of 21 and minus 14? So first, will list all of the positive factors. So we only have to worry about positive factors because we're looking for the greatest common factor. So we don't have to worry about negative factors because the negative factors would never be the, the greatest one. So for 21, we have one, three, seven, and 21. And for 14, we have one, two, seven, and 14. 
So the greatest that's in common is 7. So our GCD of 21 and minus 14 is 7. Okay, so what if we had 0 and 4? For 0, 1 multiplied by 0 gives me 0, 2 multiplied by 0 gives me 0, 3 multiplied by 0, and so on and so on. All the positive integers are factors of 0. And for 4, we have 1, 2, and 4. So the greatest number in common is 4. This time around, our GCD of 0 and 4 is 4 itself. Okay, one more question before we move on. What can we deduce about A and B if the GCD of A and B is B? Well, if we think closely, the greatest common factor of these two numbers is B. So B has B as a factor, and maybe we knew that already. B always has 1 and B as a factor. But maybe we didn't know that A has B as a factor. So let's write that down. We can deduce that A has B as a factor, or A is a multiple of B. Okay, so that gives us our definition of the GCD. Let's move along to the LCM. So given integers a and b, any integer that is a multiple of both a and b is called a common multiple. And the least of all of these common multiples is what we're looking for here. So it's the smallest positive common multiple. And it's denoted LCM AB. And if we want to flip the triangle upside down, we can have a binary operation for the LCM. So let's start with minus 18 and 12, and we'll list all of the multiples. And again, we only need to list uh, positive multiples. So minus 18 has 18 as a multiple, and then multiplied by 2, we get 36, and then multiplied by 2, we get 54. Let's try 12 for a little bit. So multiply 12 by 1, multiply by 2, we get 24. Multiplying by 3, we get 36. And as soon as we find a match, that will be the smallest number in the list that we're looking for. So we found 36. So 36 is the least common multiple of minus 18 and 12. So again, the minus signs don't really make a difference here. We just ignore them and uh, you know, treat everything as positive integers. Now, for part B, it says something a little peculiar. It says, why can't we specify what 0 and 4 least common multiple is? So let's think about this process. What we would do is we would take 4 and then multiply it by 1 and get 4, multiply it by 2 and get 8, and so on and so on and so on. So there's a bunch of multiples of 4. But if you tried the same thing with 0, the only number that you get is 0 itself. So 0 multiplied by 1, 0 multiplied by 2 just gives you 0. So in these two lists, which one is the least one in common? Well, none of them are in common, so we cannot specify what LCM04 is. So there are no common multiples of 0 and 4. And this would also be true with 0 and any other positive integer. Okay, so finally, part C. What can we say about A and B if the least common multiple of A and B is B? So if we look closely, B is a multiple of B, and we probably knew that already. B times 1 gives us B, but maybe we didn't know that B is a multiple of A. So let's write that down. 
B is a multiple of A. Now the method that we just used is a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow to list all the factors and all the multiples. Now luckily there's a quicker way to go about things using unique prime factorization. So before we read exactly what it says here, let's just think about a prime number. Let's say phi. And let's say it's raised to the power 4. And repeating this, we'll say we have 5 and it's raised to the power 2. Let's say these are our two numbers, and we're trying to find maybe the least common multiple and the greatest common factor. So because 5 is a prime number, it's already factored as much as possible in both of these cases. So the greatest common factor between these two numbers is determined by the smaller power, because 5 squared is a factor of both of these numbers, and it's certainly the greatest because it's already as big as the number that we're just you know, looking at there, 5 to the power 2. Okay, now for the least common multiple, if we were to try to multiply these two numbers to end up getting the same number, what we could do is say, well, maybe for 5 to the power 4, we'll multiply that by 1. And for the other number, we could just multiply it by the corresponding power of 5 that we need. We could multiply it by 5 to the power 2. And then we would have a common number between the two. 5 to the power 4 would be that common number. So the larger power will determine the least common multiple. And the neat thing is that this works for big numbers if we look at them one prime number at a time. So going back to what we said before here, the GCD is found by raising each prime to the lowest power appearing. And the LCM is found by raising each prime to the highest power appearing. And let's remember, in order for this method to work, we need to make sure that we're finding a prime factorization. So if you have 12 and, and 13, the 12 still needs to be broken up into prime numbers. So let's find the GCD and LCM of 242 and 110. So let's write out our unique prime factorization. So for 242, we have 2 times 11 squared. And for 110, we have 2 times 5, that makes the 10, and then multiplied by 11. Now I think it's kind of nice to line up all of these prime numbers to write another um, you know, equality here. So I'm going to write 2 to the power of 1. It's not really customary to write the power of 1, but for this method it's kind of nice to see all of the primes and their powers. Now 210 has 5 to the power of 1. The other number doesn't have any 5s as factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 5 to the power of 0. And then 11 comes up next. So the first number has 11 squared, and the next number has 11 to the power of 1. So now we're all set up to find the GCD and LCM. So to find the GCD, we just need to look at the lowest powers. So if it's a tie, it doesn't matter which one you look at. So 0 is lower and 1 is lower. So I'm just going to copy these prime powers. 2 to the power 1, 5 to the power 0, and 11 to the power of 1. That will find the greatest factor that's in common between these two numbers. And if I want to find the least common multiple, I'm just going to search for the largest prime power. So 1 and 1 is larger than 0 and 2 is larger than 1. So my least common multiple is 2 to the power 1, 5 to the power 1, and 11 to the power of 2. So if we do these calculations, 
we would find that the greatest common factor is 2 times 11, which is 22. And then the least common multiple, if we multiply all that together, we get 1,210. So let's try this one more time. So this time we're given a number a and b that's already factorized. Maybe the only thing that's a little bit um, tricky here is the 2 and the 3 are not lined up. The other numbers are, uh, but we can you know, be careful about that. So the GCD of a and b would be 2 to the power 0, 3 to the power 0, 7 to the power 2, 13 to the power 3, and 23 to the power 1. These are all the lowest powers. And for the LCM of A and B, we would take the highest powers. So 2 to the power 3, and 3 squared, 7 to the power 3, 13 to the power 4, and 23 to the power 2. We won't worry about calculating those numbers. They're kind of big. So one thing that's kind of uh, neat that happens here is if we were to multiply the GCD and LCM together, if we just try this above, we would end up adding the lowest power and the highest power to get this prime factorization. So we'd get like 2 to the power 3 and 3 to the power 2 and 7 to the power of 5, 13 to the power of 7, and 23 to the power of 3. And looking closely, that's the same as just multiplying the numbers a and b together. So that idea is given to us in a theorem below. Okay, so we've learned all the details that we need to return to our warm-up problems. So let's talk about the equal size squares. So in this problem, we have a poster board. And on that poster board, we want to cut out the largest possible squares. And we have to use all of the poster board that's there. So what we're looking for is the greatest common way to factor these two numbers. Because if we factor them so that they're in the greatest possible amount, we get the largest possible squares. And if we keep cutting up in that amount, we cut up the whole poster board with no waste. So the key is to find the GCD of 110 and 242. And if we look back in our notes, we have actually done that already. The size is 22. So those are the largest possible squares because that's the GCD. All right, so let's try the problem of tarts. So in this problem, a baker has baked 16 dozen tarts and decides to arrange them nicely in a display. So first they try rows of four, but there's two left over. And the OCD of this baker might be kicking in because they say that's not good enough. They want to make nice rows with no leftover remainder. So they try again with five, but again, there's two left over. So disgusted with this once again, they try rows of six and still two are left over. But finally, when they try rows of seven, everything lines up nicely. So I've written down the same number of tarts in four different pictures. And our job is to figure out how many tarts there are. This will tell us how many were sold out of the 16 dozen. So let's assume my picture has n tarts. OK, so we would like to know what n is. Now, if we look closely at our picture, if we look at this amount here, that's n, but two less. 
and the same there, n but two less, and the same there. So that green box is the same number of tarts, it's n minus two, and we have something interesting going on. We have a common multiple, so we have a common multiple of four and of five and of six. So wouldn't it be really nice if we could find the smallest that that number could possibly be? So the least common multiple. So let's find the prime factorization of these numbers. So four is two squared. And let's say six next, six has a two, two to the power one and three to the power one. And then five, it doesn't have any twos or any threes, but it has a five to the power of one. So let's fill in some of the, the powers of zero here. And just remember that we are looking for the largest prime powers. So if we go through our list, we have two as the largest power of two, and one as the largest power of three, and one is the largest power of five. So my least common multiple is equal to two to the power of two, three to the power of one, times five to the power of one. So this number is 60. So we know that the smallest that n minus two could possibly be, so, so therefore we know that n minus two at smallest is 60. But it could still be larger than that. It could still be 60 times two, so 120, or 60 times three, 180, and so on and so on. But it actually can't be bigger than 180 because the problem said that there's only 16 dozen to begin with. So this means that my number n itself is either 62 or 122 or 182. So now we'll look at the last part of the problem that we haven't quite used yet. The number n itself is a multiple of seven. So 62 is not a multiple of seven. 122 is not a multiple of seven. So the number that we're looking for is 182. And we started out with 192 tarts. That's 16 dozen. So this means that 10 tarts were sold. Okay, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.